now. Uh, Tom, you doing okay over there? All right, I, I just feel my heart goes out to you, brother. Uh, Paul now uses words uh, that are more than just descriptive talk about the Antichrist. Instead, they are given to contrast, uh, they are given as a contrast to the coming of Christ in his power, okay? The Greek word for coming is the same often given concerning the second coming of Christ, parousia. It is a word which indicates an arrival or an advent. Paul uses this word to contrast the two arrivals. The coming of Christ is according to the redemptive working of God. The coming of the Antichrist is according to the destructive working of Satan. One results in salvation for his people. One results in destruction for those who follow him. Okay, if the perusia of the Antichrist is because of his lying powers, or lying wonders and deceitful powers and all that, then you could argue this. But I wouldn't argue that because Jesus didn't perform his first miracle until when? When he was in Cana of Galilee, right? Was he the Messiah at the time? Absolutely. He had people following him at the time, okay? Just because the perusia uh, is describing this doesn't mean that you don't know who he is in advance, okay? He's sitting in the temple of God, he's claiming to be God, and all of these, giving these signs and lying wonders, doesn't mean that you can't know who he is. People knew that Jesus was the Messiah. One of them was named Mary, right? Another one of them was named uh, Simon or Simeon uh, up at the temple. He knew that this was God's Messiah when he was born. So I would not use that as an argument for this. I would use the signing of the peace treaty and the Levitical sacrifices on the Temple Mount as the revelation of the Antichrist, okay? I'm being fair, that's all I'm doing. I want people to know that there is another view and you could make this argument. But I do not believe you can make this argument using any part of the Synoptic Gospels. You're not going to have proper theology. Okay, so I've said that, I wanted you to know that and now you know that. If you believe that the Perusia is based on his signs and wonders, and the signs and wonders start in Revelation 12, then you make your argument. I disagree with that that stand. Okay, so um, uh, let's see here. It's according to destructive working of Satan. One results in salvation for his people. One results in destruction for those who follow him. Mark of the Beast, you're out, okay? It is a come which Paul, as noted, does more than merely describe, but rather purposefully contrasts to Christ. He will be revealed, Paul says, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Scholars argue over the placement of the word lying. Does it only describe wonders or does it describe all three aspects given? The most likely answer is that it describes all three. This is how, for example, the Coleman Bible translates it, translating the word as false instead of lying. They say the coming of the lawless one is based on Satan's working with all kinds of false miracles, signs, and wonders. Okay, the Greek.